should we be buying more bottled water? Or do you think South Africans should calm down and that we can drink our tap water? So many burning questions. So little time. I'm Carol Afori, and this is the Carol Afori Podcast, where we answer all the questions that keep going around in circles in your head. This time, we're asking if tap water is safe to drink. So with me today to unpack the conversation around water in South Africa, in Mzansi, I've got the former head of water and sanitation at Etegrini and independent consultant and has been in the water space for over 50 years with over 50 years experience. So welcome, Neil McLeod. Hi, Neil. Hi. So I guess the first question I have to ask you, Neil, is do you drink water straight from the tap anywhere in South Africa? In Durban, I do. And okay. In a, and in a few other cities. But otherwise, no. Okay. I'll tell you what, we, since we had our floods, I've stopped drinking tap water here in Durban because it just tastes different every time I drink it. Is there any cause for concern or I'm just being, I mean, if you're drinking water and you've been in water for, for 50 years and you're drinking the water out of the tap straight, then you're saying it's all good? Yes. So, I mean, there's a long answer to that short question. Okay. But most municipalities, mm. and there's, there are only 144 municipalities in the country that have the right to provide water. There's 257 municipalities, but only 144 can supply water. Of those 144, a lot don't produce water that's really safe to drink. Hmm. And the Department of Water and Sanitation does audits of of those authorities every few years. The last one was done last year. And that's what I use to judge how safe the water is. I say I drink the water in Durban, and I would drink it in Cape Town and in Joburg still. Okay. Because... In those cases, there are laboratories testing the water every day, every working day. And there's a national standard, SANS 241, that tells you what you've got to test, how often you've got to test, Mm -hmm. and what the results must be within this range, that range, for all these many, many different parameters. And our laboratory in Durban is also accredited internationally. So we know that the results are auditable, are are truthful, that the auditors come and do surprise checks and check you against other people and everything. And those tests show consistently that our water is safe to drink. There's a few small areas in the deep rural areas out there towards Ndueto where it's a borehole scheme and they're, and they're not tested often enough. Mm-hmm. So you can't say for sure that water is safe. Right. And there's only a very small number. Yeah. But 99.9% of the water comes from the same sources and it's tested every day by both Mgeni water and Etigwini. Yeah. And yeah, well, I've never been sick from it. So that's why I drink it. Another question I think most of us are curious about. I've heard rumors that water that comes out of your tap, right, is like literally recycled water from your toilet that gets cleaned out and then it comes back into your tap. Is that how the water system works in South Africa or is this fresh water every single time? There's an irony here. In some parts of this country, mm. some of the water that's put into the networks is recycled sewage. But oh my it's gosh. totally safe to drink. But here's the story. If you look at our rivers, even here in Etiguini, yeah. I think there are four rivers that are not polluted by sewage. And we have for a hundred years taken that water. We're below Maritzburg. We're not all the sewage is treated. It runs in the river. We live, the, the rivers run through rural areas where there are pit toilets or no sanitation at all. Mm-hmm. And that sewage, where does it end up? It ends up in the river. And in fact, we, even in my day, I think they still do it. We have about five sewage works discharging into rivers directly. By law, we test the water quality above where the sewage works discharges, and we test below. And after we discharge the treated sewage, the quality of the river in my day got better. Mm. So the water we were treating and putting into the river was cleaner than the water we were taking out to treat for drinking water. So we have the tools to be able to treat that water and make it safe. Okay. Um, that, that goes for a lot of parts of the world. So we've been having a rolling electricity problem in the country. Yes. Um, we have been having load shedding and we've learned through the elongated, I'll say, load shedding period that we've been in that this has now affected water supply Yes. and uh, that the pumps need electricity in order to pump water to certain areas, etc. Now, with that in mind, has this whole load shedding thing left us vulnerable and left us with unsafe water because of the situation? Again, if you're talking about places or municipalities where they have alternative power supplies or they've made arrangements to maintain the power supply, no. But where the power goes off, Mm. the main problem area is the treatment works itself. 
because mm. the treatment works needs to move that water around and do things to it to treat it to make it safe right put air into it you know move it around uh, all the rest of it so if the treatment works loses its power it can be a problem certainly your sewage works won't work without electricity hmm. um, on the pumping side what it means is that the reservoir goes empty and if the reservoirs are not maintained and cleaned you can imagine as the water level goes down 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 if there's anything on the bottom, any like sand or whatever, yeah. in the, I mean, even the wine bottle, the right. bottom of the wine it bottle, it will sink to the bottom. Stuff. Now, if yeah. you draw the reservoir down low enough, yeah, you will start stirring that stuff up, Ugh. and then it'll go into the pipes. But we chlorinate our water. Chlorine is a disinfectant that kills bacteria, so it should still be safe. But if the chlorine levels are too low, or the level of contamination in the bottom that gets stirred up is too high, and it's not, there isn't enough chlorine to kill the bacteria, then you can get sick. Hmm. How much does unattended burst pipes and leaking pipes affect the issue of water scarcity and also these pathogens getting into? So from a water scarcity point of view, it is a huge problem Mm -hmm. because the average municipality water supply authority in South Africa is losing about 40% of its water every day. That's a lot of water. We need at the moment, it's almost at 60%. So the water that comes out of the bulk supply out of Mgeni water that comes into Eteguini, only 40% actually goes through a meter and gets to somebody. Hmm. The other 60% is either stolen or it leaks out through leaks. Stolen? Yeah, because people connect illegally. Oh, wow. There's about 40 or I 50. thought it was just electricity. We also stealing no, water? there's about forty or 50,000 illegal connections in Durban right now as we speak. 50,000? Yeah. Sure. As much as we have heavy rains and we've had devastating floods where there's an abundance of rain... Apparently, we're a water-scarce nation. Is this true? or yes. So water scarcity is measured by how much water that runs off in all of your rivers mm. is available per person. Mm. And there are different categories. And we are, are water scarce. So we're like Kuwait. Like, wow. And the problem is worse. 60% of the rain falls in two provinces. Our province, KZN, and Eastern Cape. Oh. So the rains generally come from the east. They hit the Drakensberg and the mountains carry on into the Eastern Cape, and the rain falls. The rest of the country, 16% of, of the country is, is KZN and Eastern Cape. The other, what is that, 84% of the country mm. gets the other 40% of the rain. So a, a large amount of the rain falls here, and that makes it worse. So that's why you have Utugela and all these schemes, pumping water, the Orange River scheme, pumping the water up to Kauteng and those places. Mm. So yes, we are water scarce, and the Water is very unfairly distributed across the um, country. Would you say it's a good idea for people who, who catch rainwater to use it for vegetation, maybe to bath? Because a lot of people are resorting to that just to have some sort of water within their home system. Okay, so you shouldn't mix rainwater with water that you use in your house in the same network because do you know what sits on top of a roof and what the wind blows onto a roof? Birds leave their <laughs> presents and the wind blows residues of fire and that kind of thing and it all deposits on the roof. When it rains, it washes that into your rainwater tank. And so you have heavy metals and fecal pollution and all those things mm. in that water. So it's fine for watering plants. Yeah. Um, it's fine for flushing your toilet. But mm-hmm. then it must come through a separate pipe that doesn't go anywhere near the taps that you use to drink out of. I do believe that our water ranks pretty well compared to a lot of the first world countries as well. I remember visiting New York, for example, there's a sign, don't drink the water. Mm. You can use it to brush your teeth, but there's a bottle of water there that says, you know, you can take chances. Um, And it kind of made me feel paranoid because I know in our hotels, we don't have anything like that for our guests, that they cannot drink the water. So in South Africa, I would say half are fine and half are not. And, And our quality used to be generally excellent. Mm-hmm. I think things have regressed quite a lot in the last 20 years. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that we're amongst the best anymore. No, not at all. Wow. Do you think this whole uh, electricity crisis is also contributing to this and our scarcity and everything's just kind of compounded? It's a whole lot of factors. Mm. It's not enough budget, poor maintenance, the skills are missing, uh, managerial issues, all sorts of things. Mm. So here in Eziguni, since the floods, I'll be honest, I, I drink a lot of bottled water. Mm. Uh, just because sometimes I've opened the tap and I don't like the smell of the chemicals that are coming through. Um, or I've tasted the water and it's just not tasting 
very nice, yeah. especially at lukewarm temperatures, because I think that's when water really shows whether it's nice or not. Um, should we be buying more bottled water, or do you think South Africans must calm down? We okay with our tap water? The answer for South Africa is different to the answers for the places where the water is safe to drink. Mm. So yeah, bottled water is very appropriate in some some places. Mm. Remember, it's a thousand times more expensive than tap water, right? You do the sums. It's hugely expensive, bottled water. Yeah. yeah. And bottled water is only tested when it's put into the bottle. It's not tested afterwards, whereas tap water is tested every day. So are you saying so that you as you don't know what's happened to that bottled water? In the container? In the bottle. It could be six months old. Yeah, they've got expiry dates. I was like, how does water have expiry dates? But uh, it now depends, it makes sense. It depends where it's stored. Where the, you know, if it's stored in sunlight or it gets too hot or whatever... There's never zero contaminants in water. It's, mm. not, it's not sterile. So something can grow in the right circumstances. Um, so would you say that people should invest in, in those little machines that clean the water that comes into your house? And are those effective? No ways. Are those effective? Those I, filtering machines? I, I had one in Jovi. <laughs> I have very strong views of that. Because you see the filtering machines yeah. that you put on your tap, yeah. they take the chlorine out of the water. Right? So mm-hmm. now the chlorine is what keeps the water safe. So if you don't keep that water immediately in a fridge. Like you get these these jug filters where you pour the water yes, into Yes, I've seen those, yes. And the water goes through and you put it straight in the fridge. That's fine because if the water temperature is low enough, the bacteria don't multiply. If the temperature is right, they double very, very quickly. I don't know what the current situation is, but I tested bottled waters 20 years ago and some of them had so many colonies in them that they weren't even safe to swim in, never mind drink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Things have changed Colonies. from from then. Yeah. I remember there was one imported bottled water that the nitrates were so high nitrates were so high that I was told if that was fed to a baby in formula it would cause brain damage. <gasps> I don't think that product's available in South Africa anymore. But yes. So you know, nothing is perfect. We're dealing with a living organic substance. So yeah, you can drink bottled water if you can afford it. Yeah. But why waste your money when you can drink the tap water? Certainly in Itagwini. Oh. Um, there are some smaller towns there. I would buy bottled water myself. Mm-hmm. So as we come into the end of our conversation, what do you see as a future for South Africa, water-wise? There's two scenarios here. If we carry on the way we are, mm-hmm. more and more people will have less and less water and it will become less and less safe to use. That's the low road. The high road is that we get the leaks and the management of the many systems that are not being properly managed sorted out and then we'll have water that we know is safe to drink. And that's affordable because that's the other thing. If half the water is being lost and not generating revenue, that means the price is double what it should be. Mm. So if you can bring the losses down, the price will come down. Yeah. And if you can bring the losses down, it means the water stays in the pipes, which means it's safer to drink. So I guess if I had to say there's five things I've taken out from this conversation, okay, the first one is learning just how quickly water can actually get lots of E. coli and its friends if it's not stored or looked after or processed or maintained. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big one. Mm. The second one is learning that, in fact, we are a water-scarce country and Mm. we should be treating our water as precious. Definitely. Another thing I'm learning is that 40% of the water that we actually get gets to us. The other 60 is stolen or leaking pipes, which is really sad because I think a lot of us drive past leaking pipes thinking, I'm sure somebody's reported it, but I think we should take more interest in the leaking pipes. Right, I think the fourth thing is the bottled water situation. You would think that because it's bottled, you assume that it's good. And now I learn for the first time why the expiry dates are there. Because once it's bottled, it's good. But once it's sitting on the shelf, who knows what happens, especially under the conditions which the bottles are stored, whether it's in a hot place, cool yeah, place, etc. And I think the biggest thing I'm learning from this is that if we don't look after our water supply, we may have exclusively reused sewage water as our drinking water, which for some reason, I don't care how many chemicals we put into it, just freaks me out. Just on your last point, for the coastal cities, the alternative is to take seawater mm-hmm. and desalinate it. But there are more impurities in seawater than there are in sewage. That's insane. And the fish are living out there, living their lives. So that salt is very difficult to get out mm-hmm. and it needs a lot of electricity because you have to force the water through a membrane, through basically a sheet with microscopic holes in it that keeps the salt water back and only lets the water molecules go through. Mm. 
Now, the force and the energy you need to force that water through that membrane is huge. Mm. And remember then all the water's at the coast. Now you've got to pump it all the way up to Kloof and Hillcrest and Maritzburg and all those places. Incredibly expensive and needs electricity, which mm. we don't have. And inland there's no sea. So mm. you have no option other than reuse in the future. Mm. Water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink, as the famous saying yes, goes. Yes, it's true. Well, Neil, as your last parting shot, what do you have to say to anyone listening to this podcast about the future of water? It's a very difficult question to answer. I don't think anybody knows what the future is. Mm. What I can say is that there are a lot of people still in this country that are incredibly competent who have the ability to address the problems. But there are a lot of other forces at work out there that are hampering their ability to get the work done. Mm in terms of management and funding and all of that stuff. Mm. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train coming towards you. It's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's fresh water. <laughs> it's, it's water that's safe for everybody to drink. I, I remain, I wouldn't stay in the sector if I didn't believe we could turn this thing around and yeah. change the path from a downward trajectory to an upward trajectory. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, I'm just enthused by the fact that you still open a tap and drink water from yes. the tap, yes. which says, I mean, as an expert of over 50 years experience, it says we're doing something good. It's just about maintaining the good and doing more better. There we go. Well, former head of water and sanitation at Eteguini and independent consultant with over 50 years experience in water, Mr. Neil McLeod. Thank you so much for chatting to us about water. Thank you. Thank you. And now we know. If you enjoyed my podcast, please follow or subscribe to it via ecr.co.za under podcasts. And then you'll get alerts about new episodes. And please don't keep the Carol Lafori podcast to yourself. Let's make the circle bigger. You can also email your big questions to my producer, Rory, at ecr.co.za.